Hello everyone and welcome back to the world's best investing podcast. Today I'm going to be going through Rocket Lab's Q4 2024 earnings report. And there's this one thing they announced which makes me feel like maybe they could take a go at disrupting AST's space mobile business. The odds are more than zero, although I don't think it's easy for Rocket Lab or SpaceX or anyone else to disrupt AST. And I'm going to explain why, but there's a lot of details in the Rocket Lab Q4 earnings which are worth looking at. So I hope you enjoy this video. I think it's going to be tremendously fun and to me I learned so much so I hope that you learn just as much let's go as of Q4 2024 Rocket Labs operating leverage is rising in tandem with the increase in launch frequency meaning Rocket Lab is just launching more rockets in 2024 Rocket Lab launched 16 rockets which is a 60% increase versus 2023 further Rocket Lab is now launching five rockets per quarter as of Q4 versus three in Q3 2024 so the quarter just before Q4 in the graph on the screen, you can see how gross profit margin in the TTM 12 trailing months is ticking up simultaneously beautifully for Rocket Lab as the rising launch cadency enables them to amortize their cost base across more launches. CFO Adam Spice explained this causation between launch cadence and margins in the last earnings call in a way which I thought was very insightful. And as we've talked about many times before across you know various conferences and, and venues, you know, this business is a it's a scale business, right? It, you, you have to, the more you can absorb those, those standing costs across a greater number of units, your economics get much better. And that's actually what, we're, what we see playing out over the coming quarters is as we continue to scale the launch cadence, you know, the margins benefit significantly as you just get to absorb those relatively static fixed costs over a greater number of units. As Rocket Lab continues to increase launch cadence, it's now on a path to profitability. This will likely happen quicker with the launch of Neutron, their mid-sized rocket, since three Neutron launches are expected to match the entire yearly revenue from Electron launches at the current cadence. Additionally, Rocket Lab's latest move positions them to obtain an exponential increase in operating leverage. Rocket Lab recently introduced their new low-cost mass-producible satellite called Flatellite. It also has a stackable design which allegedly enables Rocket Lab to maximize the number of satellites they can launch per mission. Flatellite enables Rocket Lab to own the entire value chain required to deliver space data services to the world by allowing them to operate their own constellations on top of their entire launch infrastructure and space systems infrastructure. With every launch, Rocket Lab will be able to deploy a number of flatellites. Once in space, these satellites can then deliver data services for years. This promises to yield much more more revenue per launch and improve Rocket Lab's unit economics considerably. CFO Adam Spice again illustrated the size of the opportunity towards the end of the Q&A section in the last earnings call. Yeah, well, I, I think you know, given the overall much larger size of the opportunity on the application side, you know, I would expect that to, to fundamentally change that overall mix, right? I think that just the if, if we kind of look at and we've talked to have we've articulated the, the total addressable market opportunity in each each segment. You know, launch we've yeah. articulated it's roughly a $10 billion TAM. You know, systems and subsystems around satellites are around a $30 billion TAM. And then the applications is, you know, perhaps an order of magnitude of that. Together with the evolution of its launch platform and its space system capabilities, Flatellite now positions Rocket Lab to become the AWS of space data services. I believe the probability of Rocket Lab capitalizing on this opportunity is high as they continue to exhibit signs of world-class process power. Every mission they take on seems to push the boundaries of human capability in space, and the progress of every component of their launch and space systems business segments is eye-catching. For example, Rocket Lab Space systems team is helping NASA land a mission on the moon. It took 45 days for the device to get to the moon and it was powered by Rocket Lab solar panels. Like solar panels, come on, these guys do everything that you could ever need in space. Two of the five launches this quarter were Haste missions, which come with higher ASPs, average selling prices. Haste missions, which stand for Hypersonic Accelerator Suborbital Test Electron, use a modified version of the Electron rocket to support hypersonic research and testing. The ultimate the ultimate testament of Rocket Lab's process power is the steadily rising gross margins. They prove Rocket Lab has the ability to get things done while commanding process power. But Rocket Lab seems to be the only space provider with missions scheduled this year across small launch, medium launch, hypersonic, suborbital test launch, and they're winning across the board. In my view, this continues to point to extraordinary organizational capabilities, and I believe this competence enables them to continue increasing launch cadence, achieving profitability, and then bringing flatter to life.
life to capture a much bigger prize. Further, Flatterlight puts Rocket Lab and AST Space Mobile in the same neighborhood. With this move, Rocket Lab becomes a competitor in the space telecommunications market, and the situation becomes to be something like what's depicted on the screen now. AST Space Mobile becomes a specialized player in Rocket Lab's vertically integrated infrastructure, which covers both launch and space telecommunications. And kind of the same applies for SpaceX. AST is basically renting out the infrastructure of these two vertically integrated players. And of course, then you have Blue Origin and maybe some other ones, but you get the picture. The question is, is AST's technology complicated enough to fend off disruption from Rocket Lab, SpaceX, and others? For now, my view is that AST will remain hard to disrupt because doing so requires mastering leading edge tech, navigating complex regulatory requirements, and simultaneously building relationships with telecom providers. Disrupting AST is not a matter of launching many cheap satellites, as it seems like Rocket Lab is positioned to do, but actually deploying satellites that are able to beam broadband directly to smartphones and similar devices without modifying their hardware at all. In order to disrupt AST, therefore Rocket Lab would have to go deep into the face array technology that enables AST satellites to communicate directly with smartphones. Rocket Lab's vertical integration gives them an advantageous position to attempt to do that, but in my view it still requires a lot of specialization. Disruption seems unlikely for now with the odds decreasing over time as AST satellites get bigger, more powerful and thus harder to replicate. AST's Block 2 satellites are expected to be 10 times more powerful and 3 times bigger. As AST continues to progress in this direction, it'll minimize the number of satellites it has to launch and it will be harder to outcompete them in terms of cost, even if you have an advantage when it comes to launching. In order to illustrate how minimizing the number of satellites could offset Rocket Lab's launch advantage, it helps to reason at the limit. Suppose Rocket Lab does figure out AST's face array technology and is capable of implementing it. At the limit, AST is able to service all smartphones with just 10 satellites. If they continue going down the path, they are currently moving down, while Rocket Lab needs to launch many more of these satellites. In such a scenario, the ability to launch many satellites likely doesn't matter so much. Mathematically, it would come down to whether Rocket Lab is able to launch and operate many D2D satellites device to device for a lower cost than AST can launch and operate a few bigger ones. And together with the specialization required to bring face array technology to the market while navigating regulations and closing telecom deals, the odds are not quite in favor of a disruption. The same mental model, as I was saying, applies to potential competition with SpaceX. While anything could happen, this scenario reminds me of Spotify versus Amazon and Apple. Specialization has enabled Spotify to thrive, even though it operates on Apple's hardware and Amazon has much larger resources, way more subscribers and everything. For now, I tend to believe that AST is in a position to thrive similarly, despite renting the infrastructure of vertically integrated competitors. Lastly, while the increased launch cadence and the upcoming Neutron platform do put Rocket Lab on a path to profitability, Rocket Lab's cash reserves are trending down, as you can see in the graph on the screen now. Rocket Lab has been consuming 20 to 40 million dollars in cash per quarter over the past four quarters. And although cash consumption came in at 2.4 million dollars in Q4 2024, due to increased space systems payments collection, which is a tremendous sign of great progress, it's expected to double from last year's levels as Rocket Lab steps up investments to bring Neutron to life. So now Rocket Lab is expected to be burning somewhere between 40 and 80 million dollars in cash per quarter when they don't really have much more than 400 million dollars in their balance sheet. Thus, despite the incredible progress, Rocket Lab continues to deplete its cash reserves. Much like AST, it remains a risky investment in that there is no clear timeline for the company to start producing cash and thus become financially viable. Regardless, I am very impressed with the execution of both companies and I believe both are tracking to become platforms with a vast volume of high margin and applications, mostly in the software space. I continue to track both companies quarterly and I'm learning so much about space. So I'm having a great, great time. All right, guys, that's it for today. I hope that you enjoyed the video. If you did like it, as always, could you please share this with one friend whom you think will enjoy it? These deep dives are for free. And so the only way this grows is with your help. Thank you very much in advance. Take care. And if you want to learn how to analyze companies like I do, consider obtaining lifetime access to my course. It sells for just $350. It's taken me a decade plus to put this framework together and you can learn it in just under two hours in the course. It's a highly powerful, elegant framework. It seems incredible, but I've just put so much effort into making it work. You can go see what real customers say about it. They love it. So I guarantee you, you're going to love it. 99% of you are going to absolutely love the product. And if you don't, just send me an email asking for
for a refund and I'll give it to you straight away within the first 14 days after your purchase. So that's my guarantee to you just to show you guys how confident I am that my product works. So that's it for today, guys. Take care and see you next time.